Well, good morning, guys. I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, and today we're going to take a look at a new knife that I picked up while I was at the Smoky Mountain Knife Works Vendor Weekend. And Havilah's Bush Tools was there. Good friends of mine have been for a long time. I have several of their knives, and I actually had this knife one time before, but I gave it away to a young man in, uh, at a class that I was at, and. I don't think I ever got a chance to review that knife. So today, I thought I would introduce you to this new knife. Havilah's Bush Tools, the Trapper. I'll bring the camera in here just a little bit closer and we'll take a uh, look at some of the specs and show you how this knife performs. Stand by. Okay, so while you take a close up look here against the ruler, Let's go over a couple of the specs of this knife. Once again, this is the Habilis Bush Tool Trapper. It lists on the Self-Reliance Outfitters website for $178.95. You can check Habilis, uh, their website, for their current pricing. The overall length uh, for this knife is 9 and 1 8 inch. The cutting edge is 4 and 7 8 it's made of 3 16 inch thick 1095 high carbon steel with a Scandinavian grind. It rock wells in at 57. It has G10 handles or scales and it has a gun blued finish. This is a trapper style knife. And let's take a look at a couple of the features on this knife that I really like. Okay, one of the first things I want to talk about is the sheath that came with this knife. This is a nice, thick, bushcraft style sheath with a fire steel loop. They also had an option for Kydex, but I chose this black leather and in a left hand model. And I think it's a very nice looking sheath. It has both the, uh, the rivets here and a nice stitching pattern in it looks like very good quality the thickness of the leather is great and you can see the way that belt loop is designed uh, so that holds the belt nice and uh, or the sheath nice and secure to your belt okay good quality sheath I can't wait to wet form it uh, I've been using the fire out of this thing since I got it um, and uh, I didn't want to do anything to the sheath until I got a chance to shoot a, a video. But a couple of the features of the knife that I like, and, and the reasons that I went back to the trapper, is see how this blade has a continuous angle almost all the way from the tip all the way back to the hill. I really like that. That makes a very nice cutting knife and even though the blade is at 3 16 which I must admit, 3 16 of an inch thick on 1095 high carbon steel is uh, quite the blade. But with the right Scandinavian grind, which this one has, that right angle, it can still be a good slicer as well as a good bushcraft knife because with 3 16 of an inch steel you've really got something that you can put some effort into. The other thing that I really like is they moved the finger choil and made it a little bit smaller on the trapping model than what is typically found on some of Havilah's Bush Tools um, knives. And the way this handle swells and conforms to the hand is very comfortable no matter if I hold it like this or if I want to choke up on it. But the way it's designed with this little drop coming down here before the finger choil, it really lets your hand lock in well so that it doesn't slip down on that cutting edge. I find that out of all of the knives that I have, this particular design really lets me... Uh, it gets the grip so that I'm not sliding down close to that blade and nicking up that finger like you have a tendency to do on some knives to where this cutting edge comes all the way back. Now with that, you got to remember, when you start putting these in here, you sacrifice some of the cutting edge. So even though I like to try to keep my knives at a 5 inch cutting edge for my outdoor knives, 
this one comes in at four and seven eighths which is <laughs> yes within one eighth of an inch of my goal but I think it's a good sacrifice considering the amount of safety that I get built in with this finger choil back here and the lock that my finger has in it. It's a nice compromise between the two. Now we have lanyard holes both here and here which allow you to do a couple of different options as far as uh, what you have the versatility to do with this knife if you want to lash it to a rod or a staff. It's also bolted on with some um, very nice heavy duty pins. They're affixed to the steel blade with some uh, glues that these things just are not going to come off. And if you're not familiar with G10, G10 is some extremely tough material. Uh, I've used a lot of micarta and I've never tore up a set of micarta scales, but uh, G10 is supposed to be even tougher than that and I can't imagine that we're going to wear this out and I believe the reason they do that is right here they put a divot into the center so that that can be used as a bearing block if you get to the point that you have to do a uh, bow drill fire and it's nice and it adds a little bit more versatility to the knife. I have not used this particular bearing block, but I have with several of my other knives, and once it burns a little bit, it gets pretty daggone slick, and it makes a decent bearing block. Now, you're probably not going to be able to see it in this light, but I'll give it my best shot. It has both the Habilis uh, logo and the Pathfinder School logo on the presentation side of the knife which is where the bow drill divot is. My favorite thing about the knife is just the overall size and the way I can position this particular knife. So let's take a look at it in action. Okay, now I'm gonna be completely honest with you. This is not real fair to Habilis, but uh, I, put a, uh, I put a lot of loving into this knife before I decided to put it on video. So, I've already started to dull down the edge a little bit, and I have been quite aggressive with it. But, you know, as I've said in several of my reviews, the issue with a Scandinavian grind is it has a tendency to really dig into the wood and want to bite in, and if you're not careful, it'll take off way too much material. So what I like to do is I like to come in here and see how fine of a curl I can get when I start processing wood. Does the knife allow me to control the amount of material that I'm taking off without just automatically trying to dig in and hog off a bunch of wood? And I can say that they are right on when it comes to their grind angles because even though I've dulled this knife down considerably, you can see that I'm able to do some very, very fine curls and woodwork with that. Now, another important uh, aspect of this blade is even though it is a trap line style knife and not really designed to be my primary camp knife, it's a nice all-around size. Let me get out of that shadow here so you can see. So I need to be able to baton notches and cut them in. And this is sycamore that I'm working with. So we're not talking about a piece of soft pine. And you can tell that in just a short amount of time, it works and it cuts very cleanly with that particular application and then you can get in there and really clean that up but no problem processing wood if you're interested in having something that you can make a bow drill set out of or a hand drill set being able to utilize this bearing block on the other side no issue with that with the rock a uh, well coming in where it does on 1095 I mean that's spot on so we shouldn't have any issue at all and then of course in my area you can't hardly walk through the woods without tripping over two things 
water and fat wood. So it has to be able to process down this fat wood in an efficient manner. I don't want to have to spend a lot of time wasted as I'm processing my fat wood. So there you can see just a couple of the small curls. But I also need that 90 degree spine. That 90 degree spine is what gives me those really fine, small fuzzies. Everybody calls them Maya dust. But I need to be able to process that down. Really exposing a lot of that inner material because that's how I'm going to start a lot of my fires in my area. And you know, everything you buy, whether it be your knife or a piece of kit, anything that you're going to use in the outdoors really needs to be specific to your area. So let's see if we can get some strikes from the Phariseum rod now. Well, I could if I didn't knock it all over the place, couldn't I? Let me just pull that off. Knocked away half my fuzzies. Let me get just a little bit more. I mean, the real idea here is just to see if I can get sparks, but being able to just throw a couple of couple of sparks and being able to start a fire is not the same thing, right? You can take your ferro rod and throw little small sparks off of it all day long, but if you can't get enough heat to start the fire, you're really not doing anything. So let's get that piled up there a little bit. And then put that ferro rod down into it. Throw a couple of sparks down in there. Oop, oh, it's there. And she's burning. So we were successful. We were able to get some uh, some work done. All of what's real important to me. Okay guys, thanks for joining me once again today as we took a look at the Habilis Trapper. Habilis Bush Tool, maker of a great knife. Now if you're looking for something that's real pretty to hang on the wall, this is not the tool for you. Habilis will tell you straight up, they make tools for the working man. They don't put a whole lot of time into the, the prettiness of a knife. Prettiness. Yeah, I'm going to stay with that. Prettiness of a knife. They're not worried about the beauty and the cosmetics. They're worried about the fit and the function. And both of those aspects can be found in this knife. So if you're interested in them, I strongly encourage you to check them out at www.habilis.com bushtools.com go on their site they have several knife options there you may just find the one that works for you so thanks for joining me once again i'm tim langston with red dog bushcraft home of global safety and survival until next time god bless